Keurig Dr. Pepper finally got off their butt and landed a key strategic partnership in the energy drinks market. Can I just start off this content with taking a bit of a victory lap? I know these predictions that I'm making content mean kind of little to nothing in the grand scheme of things, but getting them correct validates all the hard work that I put into creating each and every one of these. So what the heck am I cheering about exactly? Here's a clip from a piece of content that I made in October 2021 that was titled, Cure Dr. Pepper Buys These Five Beverage Companies Next. In it, I not only explain my conviction pick for the energy drinks category being Nutribolt to AKA C4 Energy, but also provides a ton of logic on the valuation and some other key points that seem eerily familiar to yesterday's news. In terms of the energy drinks portfolio, KDP is far behind its kind of three-headed monster of competition with PepsiCo and Coca-Cola. And then they would also be obviously trailing market leader Red Bull and then Monster Beverage Corporation and even Bang Energy. But they also could be getting passed pretty quickly if we consider AB InBev owns a portion of Ghost Energy and then even Molson Coors, which owns a minority share in Zoa Energy. And I know how interested KDP is in the energy category because I was working on the Big Red Zions project right before the acquisition from KDP. But I think they're going to need more firepower than they currently have. The most flashy maybe acquisition that could be out there for KDP in this category would be Celsius energy drinks. But I think at the current publicly traded market cap at around $7 billion, it's way too expensive for KDP and I'd probably lay off for that reason. I also think the most logical pick would be to just acquire Adrenaline Shock. They already distribute the brand nationally and have deal-making history with Lance Collins that also founded Core. I just don't think Adrenaline Shock is splashy enough though, so maybe KDP looks down I-35 in Austin and acquires Nutribolt. Despite overall revenue being higher than Celsius, I think Nutribolt would actually be cheaper to acquire. C4 Energy has a lot of momentum building. And then the powders business shouldn't be all that scary in 2021 as the market for them has moved to mainstream and lifestyle. And they're already dealing with a lot of the sales channels that KDP is strong in anyways. So I don't necessarily think that the predominant amount of business being from neutral being in powder should scare KDP away. I'll unpack all of that and more throughout this content, but let's kind of cover the details from the KDP and C4 Energy strategic partnership, including the long-term sales and distribution agreement and a significant equity investment that enables KDP to participate in value creation upside expected to be created throughout the strategic partnership. Under the long-term sales and distribution agreement, KDP will sell and distribute C4 Energy in the vast majority of KDP's company-owned direct store distribution territories. This is expected to meaningfully increase retail availability and household penetration for the C4 Energy brand. Nutribolt will continue to distribute C4 Energy directly or through its existing distribution network to the specialty channel, some of the kind of health clubs and gyms and fitness channels, and will also continue to work with some of its existing beverage distributors in certain markets. As for the significant equity investment piece, KDP is making a pre-tax cash investment in Nutribolt of $863 million in exchange for preferred equity ownership stake of approximately 30% that has additional earnout benefits, rights to increase ownership in certain capital raising scenarios, and board representation. This will make KDP the second largest shareholder in Nutribolt behind its founder, chairman, and CEO, Doss Cunningham. Net of the anticipated cash tax benefits, the investment represents a multiple below 4x estimated 2023 net sales, which is expected to be above $650 million. Okay, so a lot of information there, but let's tackle a few of the points that I made in that original piece of content back in October 2021. Firstly, at that valuation, Nutribolt 
was cheaper than what PepsiCo paid for its 8.5% share in Celsius Holdings. PepsiCo does have deeper pockets and more expectations than KDP, so kind of makes sense. But I also said that Nutribolt revenue would be higher than Celsius Holdings at that cheaper valuation. And that was correct, at least when I made that prediction in late 2021. But since Celsius Holdings is currently growing at an insane 126% year over year in the first nine months of 2022 off an already huge base, they will likely reach that $650 million annualized revenue level this year, the same number that's predicted at Nutribolt next year. Next, I mentioned the, the current stable of energy drink brands at KDP that make up less than 1% of its total revenue isn't going to cut it when competing against the categorical market leaders. Acquiring more or all of adrenaline shock wasn't the answer uh, to KDP stopping its categorical ass whipping. <laughs> Finally, I said KDP shouldn't fear the C4 powder side that is pretty much 50-50 with beverages right now. For one, KDP already handles a lot of like dry goods business with its coffee system segment, but above and beyond that adjacent familiarity, you have the sports and active nutrition industry that's undergone a huge shift in marketplace dynamics. I've been barking about this stuff for the last like five to seven years, but for my big CPG folks, it's this like huge pot that's melting together. Things like an overall mainstreaming effect in consumer intents around active lifestyles, and it's that broader appeal that's disseminating the category across all large retail channels. Plus, don't forget the insane kind of proliferation of both brands and products from the low barriers to entry environment that's elevating the competitive landscape to this only the strong survive scenario which has begun incubating extremely impressive companies that can still share from conventional market leaders up and down the categorical scoreboard. While this take might be biased, I've always believed the best and brightest companies in the sports and active nutrition space are the influential epicenter for the entire CPG industry. That's why I've always been proud to say that's where I've cut my teeth in the CPG industry, and that background has been highly advantageous in my career. On a kind of last supporting note to the comfortability around Nutribolt's revenue mix, one that KDP likely considered was reviewing the recent moves of PepsiCo within its functional nutrition division, mostly Gatorade, to see there's value creation opportunities even at the highest level when you do get deeper into the various supplement industry niches. But let's shift this content into some under the radar kind of like business X's and O's or like blocking and tackling reasons why KDP chose Nutribolt, also a little history on Nutribolt for those that maybe aren't familiar. And I wanna explain why this investment fills an important short-term need at KDP and also potentially creates a long-term advantage. My personal feelings on Nutribolt are that they are one of like the most organizationally and financially mature and buttoned up companies I've seen coming from the sports and active nutrition space. That makes the strategic partnership easier for KDP and lowers the risk of the deal. Additionally, I think C4 Energy is a sleeping giant. It has great growth, it's a great product, and a proven brand name that works great in the energy drink space. Now, I'm going to kind of skip over a lot of the earlier Woodbolt distribution origin details because most won't really care. But the important year for the company was 2009 when the sports nutrition brand Cellucor launched in GNC. Two years later, Cellucor launched the C4 pre-workout product, which is now and has been for several years the leading pre-workout brand globally. Throughout the next few years, Woodbolt Distribution, aka the holding company that's now known as Nutribolt, launched several other supplement brands like Neon Sport and Royal Sport that ended up not being successful for one reason or another. In April 2017, Nutribolt made its only, or at least from my recollection, its most notable acquisition in Cyvation, the maker of the number one post-workout recovery brand in the U.S., Extend. The Extend brand is still within the portfolio, and while they just kind of revamped it and turned it into like hydration sticks a la Liquid IV, 
I'm not confident it has any material value long term to KDP. But what KDP is most interested in is the C4 energy beverages. These were launched in April 2018. Those first few years were really laying the groundwork and foundation for the successes that have happened in 2020, 2021, and 2022. C4 Energy has now become one of the fastest growing performance energy drink brands in the U.S. market. In the last 52 weeks, C4 Energy has done around $300 million in sales. In comparison, the existing energy drink portfolio of KDP has done less than $50 million. That's really the easiest contextual point I can make that shows just how important this C4 Energy deal is for KDP. Everyone has been wiping the floor with KDP and arguably the most important category in beverage right now. Beyond that short-term obvious beneficiary stuff, KDP also knows the importance of owning more of the energy everything occasion. Now, I've mentioned this concept that I've coined before called energy everything a few times, but just to kind of recap, it's basically the simplification of the consumer interest in caffeine. That can come in the form of coffee at home, coffee away from home, RTD coffee, energy drinks, and energy powders. These all compete at the end of the day for a consumer's interest for consuming caffeine to get a boost of energy. So with KDP, the Keurig machines and pods obviously own the at-home coffee category. Nutribolt owns the energy powders market. Nutribolt is also a sizable competitor, at least will be in the future in the energy drinks market. And since KDP won't be owning coffee shops, its shareholder, main shareholder, I think at this point, JAB Holdings already does do that anyways. Now it just needs to kind of figure out the RTD coffee situation. <laughs> it probably should acquire super coffee already. When they do that, KDP will be one of the biggest energy everything market share owners. Now for this last part of the content, I want to talk about some outside stakeholders that were kind of winners and losers in this announcement. And kind of what do they say? You should always start with the bad news first, right? The biggest loser, in my opinion, in all this is AB InBev. This is the third L that they've taken recently in the energy drinks market. They've built up Bang Energy and they left for PepsiCo. They also built up Celsius Holdings and they replaced Bang Energy at PepsiCo. And now they have C4 Energy leaving for the most part. Now on the flip side, this must make all similarly structured kind of powders and beverage, sports and active nutrition brand portfolios like Congo Brands, the owner of Alani New and Prime, and then also Ghost, very happy. Just like in athlete negotiations and sports leagues, when there's a ton of free agents at the same position that are on the market at the same time, it's that first deal that sets the tone for everyone else to peg themselves against that. Ghost is probably extra happy because of what I just said about AB InBev. If it's possible to have a $60 billion company by the balls, Ghost might be the closest to that reality. But don't feel bad for AB InBev. I think they have some like young Clydesdales in St. Louis that might prove important long term. This is probably the case where I kind of wink at you and say, if you know, you know. A final winner in all this is the performance energy drinks market. Now, Bang Energy laid the groundwork for everything and made it possible for deals like C4 Energy and Celsius Holdings to even happen. Alternatively, the Bang Energy bankruptcy that also throttled the subcategory growth and put a kind of minor question mark in the beverage players' heads. But that all got cleared up with this deal and it's back to rainbows and unicorns. I hope you enjoyed this YouTube video. If you did, consider hitting the like button to support me. Also, help me get to my short-term goal of 2,000 subscribers by hitting that subscribe button. I'd love to see you join me on this journey, but we need to fix the fact that almost 80% of you that are watching this YouTube video right now are not subscribed to my channel, and that makes me extremely sad. But I do want to thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.